As Nigeria's prevailing economic challenges continue to the appreciation of the Naira against the dollar, Lagos PDP governorship candidate in the 2023 election, Dr. Abdulaziz Adediro, popularly called Jando, has urged President Bola Tinubu to see to the well-being of Nigerians while living his dream as the country's leader. Jandor called on President Bola Tinubu to seek assistance and implement measures to alleviate the hardship faced by Nigerians. He emphasized the need for President Tinubu to, and I quote, press a reset button, end of quote, and reconsider his approach to addressing the nation's economic woes. Joining us now is the Lagos PDP governorship candidate in the 2023 election, Dr. Abdulaziz Adediron, popularly called Jandor. Good morning, Jandor. Good to see you on the show this morning. Good morning. Uh, it's nice to be here once again. Uh, thank you for joining us, Jandob. Before, you know, we begin to talk about President uh, Tinubu, let's start with your party, uh, the People's Democratic Party. There's a story in the papers, uh, I think today, saying that you have expelled uh, Chief Olabori George, you have expelled Senator Kofu Bokna Akirele, and all the... Uh, uh, other persons who did not work for you uh, during the campaign. Well, one would have thought that while you were thanking those who supported you, you also used this opportunity to unify the Lagos State PDP and bring people together again, instead of saying whoever doesn't want to identify with the PDP can carry their bags and go, that you have become the new leader of the party. The people you say you have expelled, <laughs> These people have been in politics for more than 50 years. So, Chief Olabode George is a founding father of the PDPO. Can you expel him? Do you really think it's realistic or you are just, you know, making a statement? All right, thank you very much, Doctor, and um, good morning, everyone. It's good to be here once again. Uh, first, let me say that um, I did not expel them. I actually do not have power to do so. Uh, but I would rather say they expelled themselves, you know, uh, when they declared for another party uh, during the 2023 electionary process. And this uh, isn't just a mere allegation. They were on your station, they were on national TV, uh, declaring for another party, both for the presidential and governorship election. And if you have a leader, a supposed leader of a political party who has gone on national TV to say, don't vote for my party, or don't vote for the candidate of my party, irrespective of whatever it is. Uh, it shows that that leader is, uh, I mean, has gone to the other party. I mean, if the party they supported had won, wouldn't they have been part of the government today? Uh, that's what we are speaking to. So I don't have power to expel them. I never said I expelled them, but they expelled themselves. And we're saying that because you have declared for another party, and which you did openly, then you actually don't have um, uh, any say anymore. If you want to rejoin PDP, I mean, it's, 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 it, we do it in policies. You can go back to your words and rejoin through your words. But on your own, you came on national TV. On your own, you hosted another candidate in your house and declare support and ask every other person to support that, that um, candidate, who is not a candidate of the party where you're supposedly being the leader. So it shows. Uh, you took that decision, we didn't take it for you. And for me, what I was speaking to on Sunday was like, it's about time we now look for like minds within the PDP and um, see how we can press a reset button. Dr. Bati, you said something about Chief Olabode George being a founding father of a party or being in the party even long before I, I joined politics. I agree with you, but just put yourself in a position of a chairman of a company who appointed uh, an MD, and for over 20 years, this MD has not been able to bring a single profit for over 20 years. Um, I joined PDP just last year. Where I vote, where I voted, uh, PDP has never won that polling unit before. It was when I joined PDP and my polling booth, we won for the first time both the presidential election and governorship election. Chief Olabode George hasn't won his polling unit for the so I don't, I don't know how you want to pull that. I voted where my aunt, who was former deputy governor, also voted in the same village, where as somebody who was the chairman of the local government also voted. But when I joined the PDP, we won for the very first time in that place. It shows 
it's something, it speaks to something. So if they, they, they're saying this, it's not, it's not about me. It's about, OK, what's the worst that can happen if the party at the national level today says, you know what, can we have a new face to take the leadership of the party? It might not necessarily be me. What I was speaking to was that when I joined the party, I was just a member. By the virtue of my position and flying the flag of the party, of course, I'm also a leader in that party as we speak. Okay. And that was what I, what I actually spoke to. Okay. So, but in the other one, where I saw a rider in that um, report saying forum as Jando, uh, NWC to probe Jando, the NWC cannot even do that because they did not even give All me right. one Jando, half of my election. Jando, let me come in here. Okay? Jando. Uh, Jando, let me come in yes. here. Thank you. I, I, and I think you've explained your part um, very well. I, I just want to talk about your statement around pressing a reset button, almost like an, a suggestion, recommendation, advice to the President of the Federal Republic, President Bola Metin, who was saying that, and you, and you highlight some of the policies he's made in his first nine months in power, and criticizing some of those decisions, saying that some of them are knee-jerk reactions. I'd like you to elaborate on that this morning. Uh, obviously, from that statement, your assessment of his time in power is <coughs> not very favorable. Share with us, what are, so what are those things that should happen with that reset button? OK, uh, what I'm saying is that um, if I elected a governor or a president of a state, nobody expects you to know everything. That is why you have a power. Uh, to identify what resources to deploy where. And this is, where I'm, this is why I said, with what has happened in the last nine months, I think the president needs to seek help. Uh, the president needs to press a reset button. What do I mean by that? You will see that um, in, in the process of us controlling the forex, I've never seen where CBN issue policies every day. And at the end of the day, nothing happens. It still don't happen. We've had the situation whereby they said, OK, all the 43 items on, on restriction should be lifted. Uh, BTA will not be accessed again. Uh, banks should you know, release excess with them. We've seen policy about crypto. We've gone on the street to run after the BDC. Still, we, don't, we, we, we didn't have results. So it shows that something is really wrong perhaps with the, some, with the person driving uh, that aspect of our economy. And it's about time Mr. President need to look outward and look for help. I, I use an example of Chief Obasanjo when he came in 1999. He went out to bring in the likes of um, Okonjo Weala. Even Erufa at that time wasn't a politician. And um, Obiaza Kosili, all of these people worked with him. Obasanjo was able to, you know, we, we, we got it right with our foreign affairs, we got it right with our economy. We had debt relief here and there. So I think, Mr. President, of course, he has tried for his kinsmen, let me use that word, that they've been together for over 20 years, you know, putting them in position of authority where they think that, but it's not working. Maybe he needs to step out of that nuclear family and look for who can help the government. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm not playing politics, and I don't think we should be playing politics because if the man crashes, he will crash on all of us. At this time, we're speaking governance. The things that is going on in this country now is affecting all of us, not just few people. And this is a time we need to see how we can profile solution or advice. They don't have to take it, but it's not bringing him down. We're not bringing him down. We're saying maybe you should look at it. He's living his dream. Nigerians also want to live their own dreams of you know, having a good government and enjoying good governance. That is what I was speaking to. And I also spoke to the high cost of living and how they are approaching it. I think um, they're going about it the wrong way. Uh, when we talk about the high cost of living, we know why we had that. When they took power in May 2029, before then, we had issues. We had um, our PMS being sued for 256 Naira. Today is over 660 going to 700. And national minimum wage has remained the same since that time. This is why the people cannot afford what is out there. It's not that there is shortage of food when they are saying open silos, open. No, there is no shortage of food. There are foods in the market, but are too expensive for people to buy. Because the buying power of people is now reduced, 
with, with the reality that, that we are facing. So I think, Mr. President, need to press a reset button. That reset button needs to come back and say, you know what, okay. let's start again. Note. There's nothing wrong in failing, but we have to fail forward. The thing he did in May 29, when he went to we'll, we'll the swearing to our, ground to say subsidy is gone. Well, unfortunately, you know, uh, we seem to have run out of time. But we thank you very much, uh, Dr. Adidion, for joining us on the morning show today.